Am I, you hear me, Joe? Yep, I got you. Awesome, awesome. Um, I'm curious, what are some of the special teams challenges with how everything is, is working right now? Because it seems like if you watch college football, the, the teams that just make rust-related mistakes are the ones that are maybe giving up a possession here or there, maybe points here or there. How do you kind of get these guys – in a position where you feel comfortable about them by the time, you know, Indiana comes around? Well, you know, number one, we try to learn from other people's mistakes. You know, I, I put together a teach clip cut up uh, every week for our guys. And, you know, like we are going to watch three today, two from the Texas tech, Texas game. Uh, but you're seeing a lot of special teams mistakes across the country. You know, I, I think it's uh, a byproduct of not having spring football. And then I don't know how other teams are operating, but I know here, up until just last week, we were operating separate practices and separate practices work for the offense and for the defense, but it does not work for special teams. So we really lost a whole bunch of time. We tried to make that that time up in the meeting rooms, you know, and, and, and maximizing our teaching time and, and maybe spending more time and going more in depth into situational type of stuff. Um, but I think moving forward, the key is to keep things really, really simple. Um, you know, that's always our philosophy anyway. So I'm hoping that plays into our favor, but but I think the more simple people keep things just because you just have you just have less time, less preparation, more distractions. It's just a it's just a unique year. So I think the more and it also helps if you have or it should help, in my opinion, if you have a lot of, of veteran players. Um, we do. So, again, I'm hoping that equates keeping keeping schemes similar. You know, you, you're going to have tweaks. You're going to do things differently to keep your opponents off balance. But as much similarities as you can probably have. Uh, because if guys got a whole bunch of reps doing something last year, it's obviously advantageous for them to, to have carryover from that into this year. Does that answer your question? Uh, how do we, oh, do we just start talking? I can hear you. Okay, cool. I mean, look, I, it's been a while since I've actually done like a regular press conference. Um, so forgive my – anyway, um, with special teams, you mentioned the videos. Are there any ways that you guys have been able to fully get together to like, go over formations, to go over – like, for instance, the Falcons game the other day, well, two weeks ago, where that onside kick, is that something you kind of would go back and say, hey, guys, that could never happen? And explain yeah, I mean, to that's some, everybody. Yeah, that's yeah. We haven't yet because we haven't done our onside kick and our and our onside kick return stuff. But but when it does, that along with a number of other examples will be shown, and we'll we'll make sure that everybody fully understands the rules and say, okay, so in this situation, what what would you have done? And call on a kid, you know, so that they can answer that question. Uh, I think every special teams and the coordinator in the country is probably using that particular one. Um, but, you know, what we do is and it's not it's not unique to this year, to be honest with you. It's just unique how we're meeting because we're doing it on Zoom right now. Um, but we're going to take you know, there was there was one in the Texas Tech, Texas game where Texas Tech, there was an onside kick and they weren't necessarily aligned right, in my opinion. And so, like I said, you know, a little bit ago, you try to learn from other people's mistakes and make sure that 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 your guys understand the rules uh, as as much as they possibly can. Matt Alamo. Hey, Coach, can you hear me? I got you. Uh, so I'm looking forward to speaking with uh, Drew Hartlob later in the week. Uh, what has just been his importance to this unit and his development the past couple of years? And uh, is there still a consensus? Is he the fastest guy on the team still? Um, I'm not going to get myself in trouble with the other guys saying who the fastest guy on the team is, but I can tell you he's really fast. Um, you know, he's just a guy that does a lot of a lot of great things for our team. He's, he's really uh, – you know, willing to sacrifice his body, if that makes sense. He's one of those guys that will just kind of run into anything. Um, he, like you said, he's very, very fast, pays, pays great attention to detail. You know, special teams is really his, his main role uh, on the team, and he takes a bunch of pride in that. And, and uh, you know, him and Dan Chisena were kind of a, a one-two combo last year. And, and seeing the success that Dan's had making an NFL team, I, I think that that only highlights for, for Drew and for everybody else on our team um, you know, the value that that, 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 that type of player on your team has. Uh, I'll next go to, uh, Lauren Muthler. Hi coach. 
Um, with this year not counting toward um, eligibility, how does that affect your planned use of freshmen this season? Yeah, I mean, I, th I think everybody's available to use, you know, it, it, it is, as we look at it, um, it's still going to come down to us for who's the best guys. You know, the, the, the problem, a lot of freshmen are talented enough, but can they grasp, even as simple as you are, can they grasp the, the schemes? Are they ready to, um, you know, are they ready for the speed of the game, the distractions of the game, those kind of things? And I think we have a few guys that are, but, but we're also going to, you know, we, a lot of people will just play young guys on special teams. Um, because they don't, they don't then have to play their offensive and defensive players, but that's the opposite of our culture, right? We're going to, we're going to play the very, very best players. So if a freshman's one of the best players, you're going to see him, you know, you're going to see him play if he's the best guy at that position, but it's not like, it's not like since they have this kind of extra year that they're automatically just going to play because of that. But certainly if they are the best, um, you know, we're going to look to play him. And there are a number of guys that, that, that I think you'll see play that, that, that do fit that category of, of potentially being the best, or if it's e even and another guy starts on offense or defense, or if it's close to even, then, you know, you'd maybe you'd, you would play that guy on special teams and that guy could have a little more energy for offense defense. And so it, it definitely does factor in. I think it factors in more for, um, you know, your guys moving forward. So, so your, your older guys, your Jordan Stouts and, and, um, you know, Jake Pinnaker and Chris Stoll and those guys get how much better will they be that extra year and how much more can they take advantage of master's degree programs and doctorate programs and those kind of things. Um, you know, that I, I think for them, I shouldn't say more important, but for that was kind of my immediate thought is how it affects those guys. But you're right. It does affect the freshman group as well. All right. Anyone else with uh, questions? Raise your hand. On your box? Yeah. Okay. Um, just kind of follow up for what I was asking earlier. When you see as a special team an egregiously bad special teams play, what is your, like your initial reaction to it? Just watching on TV, someone as a fan, someone as a coach who knows the game. I want to start crying and pray and hope that it doesn't happen to me. <laughs> it makes me want to go throw up. Because we're, we're no different. Every, everybody teaches that stuff. I mean, you think that, that, the, that the Falcons weren't taught that stuff? They were taught that stuff. It's, it's to be honest, there's, you know, there's, there's better coaching and worse coaching and all those things. But um, most people are going to cover those things. It's, 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 the, it's at the time with all the distractions, with what's going on, um, you're, you're, you are going to be held responsible and accountable. It's your job for 18 to 21 year old kids. But because most everywhere I've ever been, we've covered those things. And sometimes we've still made those mistakes, to be honest with you. So it just, it just makes you hope it keep, keeps me up at night. I mean, I don't sleep very good right now because every weekend I'm just seeing tons and tons and tons in every single game. And so, um, you know, you just try to do as good of a job as you can of educating those guys, making sure that you have guys in the right positions. You know, the, the question that came up about, about the freshmen, you know, it's one of the concerns of freshmen is, is they're, they're not experienced, you know, so, Oftentimes, are, do I have ex experienced enough guys? Um, am I putting guys in the right position and just trying to make sure that you're minimizing risk as much as possible? But the difference, you know, I talk to our players all the time about the special teams. One of the biggest differences that a lot of people don't realize is I call it one play focus. Like if you go out on the punt team and you have a bad play, it's catastrophic and you don't get to, you don't get to go to second down. If you go out on offense or defense and something bad, if you go out on offense and you have a a big sack on first down well then it's second long right nobody wants that but it's then second down and third down and you you might sustain a long drive and uh no one remembers that first play right you got a chance to make up for it well in special teams it's not like that it's a one play focus and everybody's got to be hyper focused and so you just try to to make sure that you're doing as many things like you said to show it to them to put them in those situations at practice and to make sure that you have that you know you you've created those experiences for the guys as much as you possibly can so that when that time comes they will you know they will uh, react in the appropriate way All right. any others with questions i'm not sure it's that question you can do think a shortcut to is alt y or uh, option y depending whether you use windows or mac
So you can use the, uh, the breakout rooms thing too if you need to move to another room. Yeah, coach will sit tight here. If uh, others are bouncing around, they might come in looking for a uh, question as well. Yep, no problem. Oh, coach. Yes, just sir. a quick thing. I'm I'm from Atlanta. Let's just say your response was way calmer than mine. <laughs> I would imagine so. I, I must admit I'm a little bit biased because their special teams guy is a friend of mine. I, I know him and I think he does a really good job, but I, I don't blame you. I get it, man. <laughs> Thanks, man. No problem. They've lost a couple tough ones like that, too. Oh my God! Last week, don't even Jesus, don't. I, I I've oh, been in a good mood, and I'm gonna stay in a good mood. Yeah, that's the right attitude. I like your attitude, man. There you go. Control what you can control, right? Your attitude, and your effort. Yes, sir. Hey, coach, I got a quick question for you. Um, do you a lot, a lot of times in in special teams, you have guys who might not get that much playing time, and the way they'll see the field is is through special teams. Do you see that kind of changing this year, possibly with the quick turnaround? Um, no, you know, I think that really changed with our philosophy. You know, I don't know how it was before I got here, but but our philosophy was, is really not that way. You know, we're, we're going to play the best players. Uh, and oftentimes the best players do start on offense and defense. So um, I don't see it changing much of how we do things. You know, Coach Franklin and I's agreement with, with Coach Pry and Coach Sharaka is that, is that every starter – besides uh, O-line, D-line, or quarterbacks, can start on two teams. Um, and then if they're going to be on more than two, you know, it would be a discussion to be, to be cleared by the coordinators to make sure that we're not over-utilizing or under-utilizing anybody. So I don't think that happens here uh, that much. You know, it, some, but again, we're going to play the best guys. So if the, if the best guy is Jesse Lucchetta, but he also starts at linebacker, well, then, then he's going to be the best guy. So um, I don't think it'll have much of an impact that way this year. Okay, thanks. The, the difference for you, just to further, since no one else is asking me, the, the, the difference to me is that sometimes a really talented player who, who would be playing on offense or defense, but there's a learning curve. There's more of a learning curve to learn that playbook on offense or to learn all the different coverage adjustments and calls and everything on defense, whereas the special teams are simpler. So a guy can sometimes play sooner because and, and be better or be just as good as the guy playing on offense or defense because it's a lot easier. You know, if I'm on kickoff, there's there's not that much to think about, right? Well, if I go out on defense, there's a whole bunch of different things to think about. So that's where I think that comes into play some. And, and places that you've coached in the past, have you found that a little bit different than it is at Penn State, someplace that like here with, with such high level guys? Um. Yeah, a, a little bit because you have more high level guys th than here, but but the places that, that I've been, um, most of them, special teams have been really important. And, and I've, I've hoped that I've helped to cultivate that culture to where our best players want to be on it and, they're, and that they're mad if they're not on it. And so um, I have been places where, where it was like that, where like you couldn't play guys that started an offense or defense and you only played the young guys and we did, we weren't as good, you know, so it's certainly anywhere that I am, if I can, I'm not the head coach, but if I can, uh, it's my responsibility to cultivate the culture where the best players play and the best players want to play. You know, and I, I think here you would find that Shaka Tony came into me, Lamont Wade came into me, just to give you a couple examples of guys saying, coach, I want to be on more special teams. Ellis Brooks, coach, I want to be on more special teams. Jesse Lucchetta, I can go through Journey Brown. I can go through all the guys that have come to me individually saying, coach, I want to be on more special teams. How can I get on more special teams? That tells me that our culture is certainly, if not already there, is heading in the right direction when, when, when the guys want to be on it because they realize the value of it. Thank you. No problem. All right, Schmeier, if you have any questions, just raise your hand. All right, Coach, I think we'll, we'll let you go here. So. Awesome. Okay, thanks, man. I appreciate your awesome. time and setting everything up. All right, thank you for joining us. No problem.